Okay, perfect. We are now recording. So hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the National Day of Civic Hacking Prep Workshop. Uh, my name is Veronica. I'm one of the program managers here on the network team at Code for America. Um, and just wanted to essentially have a chance for everybody to get together today to talk a little bit about what your plans are for National Day, answer any questions. Um, we're really fortunate to have a DD and Melani here from the criminal justice team um, at Code for America. They have been absolutely monumental in putting together um, much of the information that's in the toolkit um, and are really kind of the curators behind um, some of the content to help in the execution of National Day. So we're really excited to have them here so that they can um, help guide us through some of the some of the actions, um, particularly in the user research area, um, where most of kind of our actions are focused. Um, so I would love to get started with just quick introductions. So if you could please say um, your name, your city or what brigade you're from, and then um, how are you feeling about National Day? Are you excited, nervous, a um, little bit uh, not ready um, or very ready. Um, just how are you feeling about National Day? And I'll call people out as they appear in my um, grid here. So let's start with you, Pam. Hey, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> this is Pamela from Greenville, South Carolina and um, not feeling super ready. <laughs> it's our first National Day of Civic Hacking at all. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, well, really excited. Uh, Michelle, you're up next. All right. all right, I'm Michelle from Code for Boston. Um, we're feeling somewhat ready. We're getting a little bit more buy-in at the end here, you know, approaching the date so that's pretty exciting um and we're excited about the connections we might have the opportunity to make so you know here's hoping we get our act together and get this thing going wonderful thank you i'm christina i have you up next okay uh, okay here i am hi i'm christina uh from indianapolis uh code for indianapolis brigade this is our first uh, National Day of Civic Hacking, or Action, as I've been kind of calling it. Um, we're excited. We're a little nervous. Um, had a pretty productive meeting today with uh, Neighborhood Christian Legal Clinic. They're going to be helping us out that day with uh, free legal counsel, and we're trying to get some other people from the community to also partner with us and help get the word out. So, um, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Nehemiah, I have you up next. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Amaya Dakris. I'm the co-captain of the St. Louis Brigade, uh, Open STL, and uh, we we've been the and driving in one direction with the few people that we have. We we decided to maybe forego this year's National Day Civic Action because we don't have enough people to like tip it to the. Uh, and, and for connections for that matter, to pivot the, uh, the records expungement, even though that's, well, yesterday was national, sorry, today was a uh, justice, sorry, restorative justice um, afternoon downtown in the city. So, um, so what's happened to us? I'm sorry, it's cutting out, Nehemiah. Um, but maybe if you're able to type in the chat the rest of what you were going to say, um, we can read it there. Um, okay, Catherine, I have you up next. Hey, I'm Catherine Generakis. Uh, I'm one of the original co-founders of Hack for LA, uh, our Southern, Southern California Brigade. Um, I'm actually not super involved in the day-to-day -day operations of Hack for LA right now. Uh, we actually have three weekly hack nights running downtown, west side, and newly uh, in South LA, Inglewood. 
Um, so uh, there's a much more <laughs> connected in set of organizers who are planning our national day stuff. I'm not actually sure which one of those uh, crews is gonna be the main host. Um, but I wanted to sit in uh, both because uh, I've been involved with Hack for LA uh, since the very first national day of civic hacking. So it's kind of what started our whole brigade. Um, I'm also the co-founder of a technology company and I wanted to find out a little bit more about what you guys were asking folks to do so that we could see if we could um, provide any support um, for, uh, for other folks. We have a workflow automation platform that we want to make available, but only if it's going to be useful to folks. So I wanted to see what the plan was. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Lena, you're up next. Hi, I'm Lena. I'm from Code for San Jose. Um, nervous for the <laughs> National Day of Hacking because we haven't done this in five years and we don't think anybody within our brigade right now has ever like led or like, you know, led a National Day of Hacking. So we're pretty nervous and very unprepared. But we have a partnership with um, Santa Clara County Probation Office. Um, we don't really have any concrete ideas yet, but then um, we're working that out right now. Awesome, thank you. Eric, I have you up next. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we are exploring partnering with other organization and other group of folks who are looking to focus on expungement. Our National Day of Civic Hacking um, coincides with a local um, hackathon tech conference, uh, civic engagement conference put on by the city and county uh, that we live in St. Paul. So we've got the mayor and the, and the CIO involved in that. And that is not focused on expungement, but we're happy to uh, be speaking with an, another group of folks who are gonna try to focus on that for the entire week, not just that opening weekend. Okay, awesome. Um, Luigi, I have you up next. And just in the interest of time, if we can try to keep the how you're feeling about National Day um, down to just a couple of words, that would be super helpful. Thanks. Hey, um, I'm Luigi from Code for Atlanta. And we're partnering with a local organization called Reform Georgia. So I'm feeling uh, pretty good about our upcoming events. Awesome, thank you. Janet, you're up next. Um, okay, we will go to Isabel. Hi, this is Isabel. I'm from Call for Baltimore, and I'm feeling nervous, but getting ready. Hopefully, everything will go well. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Allison, you're up next. Hi, I'm Allison uh, from Open Oakland, and I'm feeling a little better recently. We're getting some traction recently with a potential partner, so I think it'll come together. Great. Um, Tom, I have you up next. Uh, <clears throat> hi, uh, this is Tom Marthaler from Code for Phoenix. Uh, we're kind of, I'm on the hesitant side just because, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling prepared, but I'm just kind of wondering what like the, uh, the turnout is going to be and everything. So, yeah. Awesome. yeah, I think that's definitely a normal question. Um, all right, Jason, you're up next. Hi, I'm Jason Anton. I'm with Isabel from uh, Code for Baltimore, and I uh, am excited for the day. Cool. Um, Mike, you're up next. Okay, we'll move on to Schaefer. Hey, I'm Schaefer from Code for Greensboro. Um, feeling anxious, but excited. Um, this is the first uh, National Day of Civic Hacking that me and my co-captain will be running. Um, but we have been talking with uh, NC Legal Aid, um, had several conversations both at the state level and uh, in our local chapter. So excited. Cool. Thank you. Hi, this is Mike. I forgot to unmute. I'm with Open Open, part of the leadership, and I'm here to support Allison, who's leading our effort. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Melanie, I have you up next. Hi, I'm Melanie Masnick with Code for Asheville. Um, I'm not sure what the question was, but we're uh, still preparing ourselves for uh, the National Day of Civic Hacking. I think I realized recently that I needed to find out more about journey mapping. 
So. Cool. Um, Meredith and Ben, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes. Hey, everybody. I'm Meredith. I'm the network team at Code for America. Uh, excited to see all your faces. I presume the prompt was, I just um, got off a call with the National Expungement Week folks, actually. So sorry I'm late. I presume the prompt was, how are you feeling about National Day? Yeah. Um, I'm feeling so excited. Also uh, want to make sure that we're leveraging all the resources we can to support all of you. Um, so we just extend an invite to please, please reach out to us if you have needs or questions or things you're worried about. And hopefully that'll be part of this call too. Um, but that, that offer still stands. Hi, I'm Ben Golder. I'm an engineer at Code for America, helping out on the network team, and I'm feeling um, excited about the theme for National Day of Civic Hacking. I'm happy to see focus on criminal justice stuff work. Perfect. And I think, Julie, I might have skipped over you. Um, you'd like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Julie. I'm from Code for Miami. Um, pretty excited about the event. We're partnering with um, the oldest black bar association in Miami. So they focus a lot on social justice issues. So they're kind of our subject matter experts and we're focusing on amendment four, which is restoring um, voting rights for felons. So more on that than expungement, but I think we can still do a lot of the same challenges, just a little bit different subject matter. Awesome. Um, and I think that's a great point, Julie. We've gotten some questions in terms of, oh, well, what if um, the action that we um, want to take or are most prepared to take or we had already decided to take a few months ago um, is not necessarily just in the three prioritized actions. Um, and we want to say, yes, we support everybody's work that you're doing on National Day. Um, we are promoting all the events the same. Um, that's a question that's come up as well. Um, and also just a it's important to think about the fact that a lot of the work that we're doing um, is very interrelated to record clearance and the expungement process. Um, and there are a lot of wraparound services like voting rights or like um, housing um, that can play into somebody's journey. Um, who has been justice impacted. Um, so um, with that, Melani and Aditi, would you like to introduce yourselves quickly and then we'll go through um, kind of where we are at this point and then Aditi will walk us through um, some of the user research um, parts of the journey mapping and usability scorecard. Um, and then we'll talk about the um, Know Your Rights website and then we'll get to questions and answers. Um, does that sound good? Okay, wonderful. I can kick us off. Hi everyone, I'm Melani Santian. I'm the Associate Program Director for Criminal Justice at Code for America and working on Clear My Record and looking at national expansion. So we're really excited to see all the work that you all will be doing on National Day of Civic Hacking and Aditi and I have been working pretty closely together to help support the toolkit. So please, excited for all the questions. And my name's Aditi Joshi, and I am a researcher uh, with the criminal justice team here for Code for America, and I'm super excited um, to support y'all uh, in the sort of endeavors that you decide to do on National Day. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, so what I'd like to do, I just popped in um, a rough agenda that we have for this workshop into the chat. Um, and so what I'd like to do at this point is just do a very, very quick overview of where we are now, just to make sure that everybody is kind of on the same page. Then what I'd like to do is quickly screen share and physically walk through the toolkit just to make sure that everybody is aware of the various information, because there's a lot of information in there and want to make sure that you kind of know where to go to find um, answers. And then um, talk about just the, the website, which we don't need to talk about that much. Um, and then we will go into a little bit more in depth about, about the actions. So um, just to kind of recap of the process of how we got to where we are today. Um, so kind of towards the beginning of this year, um, there were conversations um, with the National Advisory Council and incorporating feedback from folks from past national days 
benefits of, of civic hacking, uh, what it is that we wanted to do this year and where we wanted to be as a network and how we can come together um, in order to have an impact on this um, certain day. So the National Advisory Council led really um, in, in depth process um, in order to kind of decide on what general area that we wanted to work within and then um, prioritize actions that we could all take on National Day of Civic Hacking. Um, and so we're really fortunate that the National Day of Civic Hacking coincides with National Expungement Week. So we've been working with various partner organizations um, led by an organization called Cage Free Cannabis, um, who is coordinating National Expungement Week um, in order to um, work with various partners in cities that are applicable, that are holding um, clinics during National Expungement Week. Um, and so you should have, if you are in a city that has a another organization participating in National Expungement Week, you should have gotten an email introduction to those partners. Um, and even if you don't have a clinic happening in your city, um, you can still participate in these actions. Um, but it will just be a little bit different in terms of how you kind of source your partner organizations. Um, and so what I'd like to do now is I'll share my screen. And we can quickly um, walk through the aspects of the toolkit. So this toolkit has been put together from lots of different sources um, inside Code for America um, and through resources that the network has produced over the last couple of years. Um, so want to highlight just the various sections. Um, I know this might be a little bit redundant, but sometimes if you don't see something, you don't really know where it is. So want to um, walk through um, this toolkit and, and what's inside of it. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, sorry, I'm freezing up a little bit here. Okay, so um, we begin by talking about what National Day of Civic Hacking is, um, what is new this year in terms of taking collective action. So what is collective action and why are we doing it? And then what the goals are. So what are we hoping to achieve? And then talking about what exactly we'll be doing for this year's National Day of Civic Hacking. Um, next, we move on to the logistical planning aspect. So here you will find a planning timeline um, and you will also find ex um, resources from National Expungement Week, their website and toolkit. Um, and so we have listed out kind of starting two months before your event up until your event some suggested actions during certain time frames for you to be thinking about. Um, then we have a lot of marketing materials. So these are sample emails that you can send to your lists um, about your event and participating in National Day of Civic Hacking. So hopefully these are pretty much just plug and play. You can copy and paste and then insert the information that um, it correlates to what it is that you're doing. Um, sample tweets um, for National Day of Civic Hacking as well. So that's another just plug and play right there. Um, there is always um, an aspect of whether you want to help generate press for your event. Um, so here are some resources for generating press. And then something that I'm really excited about are these um, graphics. Um, so our marketing department produced some graphics for National Day, um, which are super cool. Um, then we have a whole um, section on partnerships and creating partnerships in your community. Um, also getting in-kind um, donations and donations for your event. Um, and then we come to the execution part. So we'll go in depth into this in a few minutes. Um, and this includes um, guidance on user research and then how to execute each of the three actions, which are journey mapping, the usability scorecard, and the Know Your Rights Guide. Um, once we get through that, there's a small section about fundraising um, so that you can help fund your event. 
And that is the totality of the toolkit right now. So if you have any other questions about areas that might not be in there, please make sure to surface those with us. Um, and if you have any questions that are, can be answered by sections in the toolkit, um, hopefully now you know where to find them. Um, and then just in terms of the website, um, this was, released last week this new version of the website and so it shows how folks can show up so attending an event um, and the events are listed here by state um, and then the second action is spreading the word so how do you promote um, the work that we're all doing on social media and then sustaining the work um, which is an opportunity to donate to the larger network and you of course um, can have people donate to your brigade as well um, and then just some language about what we're doing um, that was all very quick but does anybody have any questions about that the toolkit the website Nope. Okay, perfect. Well, um, now I'd like to pass things over to Aditi to talk about user research and journey mapping and the usability scorecard. Awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and also share my screen just so we can go through uh, the toolkit together um, and uh, walk through that. Give me one second. All right, great. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so as was sort of mentioned, the sort of first piece of uh, these guides are uh, methods and principles for conducting research. Um, so we, uh, as a research team at Code for America, have been going through and kind of naming all the principles that we care about as a team, and we wanted to share them um, with y'all in this toolkit. I'm not going to go over this. I'm just going to sort of explain what each section is. Um, and the second section is around safety and ethics, around how to have these sorts of conversations, preparing yourself for a safe and comfortable conversation, and what interactions with participants should look like in terms of obtaining informed consent, um, and uh, what sort of language might be useful for you to use, um, and things like that. Uh, so that's what these, and then the last section is around storing data. So it's important for you to not keep data too long, to keep data de-identified, um, and sort of uh, limit the number of people that can see the data that you collect um, so that we're ensuring privacy for the participants that we're talking with. Um, and so that's just sort of, sort of some general overview about what uh, sort of best practices are in user research. Um, and then we're going to go through journey mapping first and then the scorecard. Um, so journey mapping is really useful both for um, y'all to do individually, but also for us as a team to understand uh, nationally what expungements look like. Um, and the main things around journey maps, as you can sort of see in this visual here, are sort of key steps that people have to go through um, when they're going through their expungement journey. Um, so this specific example was done um, when we went to the Cook County Expungement Summit um, earlier this year. And you can see sort of we broke the entire experience of a person into these key steps of registration, triage, presentation, wait, meet with attorney, pay and exit. And really just by breaking it up into these high level steps, we're able to see what happens at each one. And the second piece are sort of those things that came out of the conversations that we had with people. What sort of emotions and thoughts do they have at each of these steps? Um, where are their highlights and lowlights in their journey? And what sort of quotes did we hear that talk to each of those pieces? Um, which really gets us an understanding of, okay, where is the worst experience for a participant and how can we uh, support them in making that experience better? And where are their highlights in that experience and where can we um, sort of make sure highlights happen more often throughout the experience. Um, and then the other two sections kind of just give more information around each of those steps um, and what the experience might be or what we might have uh, observed during that. Um, and so what we've provided to you is sort of how to do this on your own. So um, if you have a partner that's having an expungement week event, um, it's really useful for you to talk to them about um, 
what you want to do in terms of a journey map and so that they know that you might be wanting to talk to participants that are going through the expungement process and also to tell them that this is something that can be really useful for their experience as well so that they can see what participants are going through because they might not have the time um, or resources to do this sort of research on their own. Um, and so it's useful for you to bring out sort of printouts of your questions, clipboards, post-its, markers, um, and then a like large format uh, printout of the journey map template, um, which I can show y'all here. Um, and it looks very similar to what I just showed you for the Cook County one, um, just with some things that you can fill in yourselves. And at each one of these sort of high level steps, there are questions that you can be asking participants. Um, so at the beginning, you might want to ask how people heard about it, how they decided to attend, um, how they're feeling as they move on, what they think is going to happen next, what's been the easiest and hardest parts, what unexpected things happen, and then at the end, sort of if they have any unanswered questions or if they know what's happening next. Um, and you can label as you see fit the sort of general steps that you um, see. They might not be the same ones that I just mentioned earlier. Um, and again, giving you space to think through what emotions, thoughts, and thoughts are pe that people are feeling, and then the actions and observations that you see. So the actions will be things that you see people doing, and observations might be related to people's actions, they might be related to the space, they might be your general thoughts, things that you saw when you're just observing. So when you're thinking about journey mapping, um, it's really important to not only do these sorts of interviews with participants as they're going through each of the steps, but also taking time either before or after the interviews or in between the interviews to really observe how people are interacting in the space, interacting with one another, how transitions between steps might happen. Um, and so after you sort of do those observations and interviews, you can come back to this um, uh, template and fill it in with your team. Um, and then you should have at a high level this journey map filled in from the conversations and observations that you had. Um, and there are sort of two things that you can do moving forward from when you actually come to this stage. The first is, and it's mentioned here as well, the first is sharing this to us just as a photo and sharing it to your partners, sharing it with your partners as well as a photo. Um, and then we've also provided um, the sort of sketch template that we use to create that PDF um, that you can decide to transfer your work into. Um, and there's a folder that we can all sort of collect all of the um, journey maps into so that as you're going through the day or later, you can put, sort of see what another brigade might have come up with. And we can get a really clear understanding of uh, what the journeys are like for different people as they're going through um, the expungement process. And um, one note as well, um, when we do send out the um, swag packets for National Day of Civic Hacking, we'll be including large size journey maps for the brigades that have um, said that they're going to be doing journey mapping. Um, and so that'll be a nice visual at your event and way to collect information um, in addition to um, uploading the photos and the individual journey maps. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can probably notice from this journey map, it's really uh, reliant on sort of having access to people to talk to as they're going through the process. Um, but it's totally doable to do a sort of journey map if you're not um, attending an event as well. Um, they might look a little bit different. And so usually what that process is like is trying to look online to see if there are guides for people who are trying to go through the process themselves. Um, so lots of times legal aid clinics will say, if you want to get an expungement, here are your steps that you need to take. And it's really useful just to visualize the steps um, so that instead of having sort of these long legal guides, people can see visually what the process is. Um, so I just wanted to share this example as well in case people want to, um, people don't be, people don't have access to an event in their area. Um, so this is an example that we put together for Washington State. Um, again, you see at the, the top, there are these high level categories of steps. Um, and it was really important for us to break down 
at each step that a person does into individual components and see who else is involved in those. Um, and this was created straight from sort of a law help guide document um, just to visually see what a person has to do at every point and who might be involved in that process. Um, so just to put that out there that even if you're not attending an event, you can do journey mapping. It just might look a little bit different and involve less talking to people and participants and more just doing research in, online and visualizing that research. Um, great, I think that's all I have for journey mapping. Do, we're gonna do questions at the end. Yeah, let's do questions at the end. Okay. Um, great, in all of the links that I just clicked on are in this toolkit um, in case you need to look at that again. So the second piece is the usability scorecard. Um, and again, like I was mentioning for journey mapping, this is a great way to understand how different expungement processes work across the entire nation. Um, and by ranking people on sort of these specific questions, we can get a holistic view of what people um, what, what different states uh, use for their policies. Um, and we're hoping that we can have the sort of score, scorecard where we can rank all these different states and see um, which state, I guess, does has really expansive policies, has uh, policies that help people and where states um, might need a little push. Um, and so again, there's sort of two different ways that you can go about doing this is uh, looking online at legal aid resources are a great uh, or a resource legal aid websites. I mean, um, there's also government websites and uh, other reentry resources that you can go to to answer these questions. Lots of times there are uh, resources for people uh, during reentry that have answers to a lot of these questions. Um, and then if you're at an event, definitely the attorneys or the partners that are putting on the event will have uh, answers to a lot of the questions in the scorecard, or they can tell you where might be the right place for you to look for your particular uh, location. Um, and so these at a high level, I'm not going to go through the questions, but these are the questions um, that we are uh, asking you to answer um, related to access in terms of finding information about um, expungement, what sort of preparation people need to do when they're going through the process, how fines and fees are related to the process, um, how much time the process takes, um, and waiting times and things like that. Um, and for each of these sort of like a yes or no answer. Um, and then again, we'll sort of compile, excuse me, compile all the answers into a document um, and then visualize in some way how states relate to one another. Um, and as is mentioned here, you can do this um, in conjunction with journey mapping as well, especially um, if you're at an event, but also if you're, if you're not, there's definitely online resources that can allow you to do uh, both of these things. Great. That's all I have. Awesome. Thank you. That was fantastic. Um, so I, I know we're going through a lot of information here before we get to questions, um, but want to be able to get through all of the information um, because I can imagine we could get bogged down in questions for each portion of this. Um, so if you can just stick with us um, while we go through just a little bit more. Um, I'd like to kick things over to Ben, who will talk about um, what kind of the vision is for the Know Your Rights site um, portion of of these actions. Hi. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're, I'm just going back to the same document that Aditi was showing um, into, into the... Uh, oh, I can't actually uh, share my screen. Veronica, ben, you're... Ben, you're breaking right up now. a lot. Is he breaking oh, up for sorry. everyone else? No, he's not breaking up for me. Um, ben, I just made you a co-host, so you should be able to screen share. OK. Um, OK, can you see uh, my screen? Yes. The, all right. Um, so yeah, this portion in the National Day of Civic Hacking Toolkit. Um, so this portion is about um, a project to um, 
to create um, basically more usable and accessible information for the rights of people who um, who are in reentry or people that used to be incarcerated. Um, and uh, so we're, we're trying to set up, you know, this option for any brigades that are interested in, in maybe doing um, like a technical or design focused project um, that would tie in pretty well with the, like a small uh, technical or design project that could tie in pretty well with the um, expungement week theme. Um, so here we have sort of a prompt question of how could we, how might we create a minimum viable, viable product um, of a national way to inform justice impacted individuals of their rights. Um, and uh, so there, just in terms of background, there are existing resources out there on what kinds of rights people would have who have, uh, who have um, been dealing with the criminal justice system but um, there's a lot of them aren't super usable or very accessible for people. And so we have this prompt for ways that people could sort of design a better interface for understanding that stuff. And we broke it down by some key um, types of rights that people could research or create guides for. Um, so some of the five, the five areas would be voting. Um, so what does it take for people to regain their right to vote? Can they vote? Um, and uh, expungement, are the people able to clear their convictions in what situations? Um, disclosure, like how much would they have to tell employers? Um, can they serve on a jury? Are they able to hold public office? Um, and there's some existing resources that are excellent, in particular the Collateral Consequences Resource Center, um, and which is linked from here. It has a lot of great like legal analysis, um, but again, it's not necessarily in a language that would be um, really accessible to people. Um, and there's a few specific pages they have that break down for all, like 50 states, some of the details of, of rights. Um, but some of it's in, a, again, like sort of a legal, legally type language. Um, so yeah, we, we're gonna have a Slack channel where people can sort of join and work together um if they if they want to work on this like uh on uh during the day or, or and um we um we have some example ideas of say we'll probably add to this a bit more but um maybe perhaps like uh idea for some sort of a website where people can look state by state or infographics that could explain um the right situation at a glance um yeah and um there's a bit more in here, but that's that's it in a nutshell. Anything else I should say about it? No, I, I think that's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, perfect. So with that, I'd love um, Milani. I think that um, a couple of things that we're doing um, is referenced here um, in the in the toolkit the actions. Um, I'd love if you're able to give just a couple minute explanation about how some of this work fits into the larger picture, the fact that there is a coalition of different organizations nationwide um, working on this and how kind of this work um, is able to plug into the larger picture so everybody kind of knows that there's um, there's kind of an end game or, or a larger framework that this fits within as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think we got really, really lucky and are doing a really good job of making use of the fact that there are already these big groups of advocates who are coming together to bring attention to record clearance at large and marketing that as National Expungement Week creates this great opportunity both to bring more leverage to the work and to find interesting new ways for our brigades and our network to support advocates who are on the ground doing this day in and day out and creates this opportunity that you get everyone gets to learn from each other you both can share your expertise and skill sets and hear the experience they have delivering services and going through uh, the day-to-day -day of what it is to do record clearance so i don't think we could have come up with a better event that that overlapped and i think the power that our network really brings especially in this is that by making, you'll notice that we focused on a lot of things that make a process visible. Um, you're going to meet so many people who have been working in this all their lives and have tried to distill down what are the issues and the problems in the space. But we have seen time and time again at Code for America, the power that comes with making that process really, really clear to people in a visual way. So I really am excited both to see how this work 
um, builds into the national movement and brings more attention to it. So we really want to help support you in that if there's anything that we can do to make that as possible as as great as possible. And then in the long term, what we would love to see is building off of Ben's point or what are ways we can bring all of your work together so you all can see it, learn from it, share it, as well as then bring attention because we're sharing it in a public way of what happens when the entire network is moving in one direction. Um, record clearance in general is also just a very popular topic right now in many, many states. Uh, there were something like 29 new states in the last year that were tackling some portion of record clearance legislation in states. And it's probably one of the least known parts of the criminal justice system that has the biggest impact to how people are able to re-enter society. So removing the barriers from our criminal record allow people to get access to better jobs. It allows people to get access to better housing, uh, education, and so many other economic opportunities. So whatever we can do to lift this up, I think is both a great use of is a great use of all of our time and can support what could happen in the future to expand this work even further. Awesome, thank you so much, Milani. Um, so now I'd like to open things up for questions. Um, what questions do folks have? Go ahead, Michelle, and, and feel free to just unmute yourself and, and start talking. Perfect, thank you. Um, so uh, you, there was a lot of focus, is a lot of focus on visibility and clarity and communicating about the process. Um, what do you do when you have people who feel they have created clarity, um, who believe they, who have been working for a long time, who you come in and you say, you know, we can make this clear and they say, look at all the material we've created, right? They have like documents, documents this thick and, you know, they, they, that outline all the aspects of the process in, you know, a lot of times legalese and so you know they they kind of feel uh, I usurped or 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 um, um, you know they feel that their contribution and their work is being discounted yeah I think that's a really good question thanks Michelle um, I think it's really important to uh, acknowledge and explicitly tell them that your work gets to come from all of the intention they've already put in and all the learning they've put together. And then also to just talk about from a broader space. So something um, that we often do is say, yes, we couldn't do this work without you. And we've heard from people going through the experience that even with all the documentation, just the amount of paper papers that are coming from um, these guides can be overwhelming. So how can we break it down into more digestible steps for people? And then I would also say, and you can use this as you feel uh, equipped or necessary, but we often talk about the fact that like, code, being from Code for America comes with a certain level of privilege of being this like technology company, and it can bring a different group of people to an issue. And I think something most advocates will tell you is that like they've been like banging on all the doors for a long, long time and not making headway. And so partnering together can really elevate the work. Um, so you want to make sure you're accurately representing something um, that represents their work and brings more people to the table and brings new attention and new eyes and new momentum. I think that was thank you. Great, great answer, Melani. I would yes and Melani by saying use a yes and framework, I think, for folks to say, like, you have brought so much incredible knowledge and material to the table. And how do we get that into even more hands? How do we make that even more accessible uh, to folks? We want to help um, make sure that this content is as um, distributable and, and accessible as possible. So how do you frame it as though you're, you're building on great work that's already been done? Um, because you are. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Any other questions?
Okay. Um, hey, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, here in Georgia, we don't really have a expungement law. Um, so what would y'all recommend for states where, um, you know, it's called National Expungement, expungement Week, but it's kind of hard to do in our state. Um, I think these uh, activities, these three activities are awesome and they're great. Um, and I'm wondering how to best sort of uh, frame it or message it for folks that something like this, some, some real expungement like what's happening in California can happen here in our state. Um, and how should we like best sort of attack, like, like frame that uh, discussion with, with people who want to contribute, who want to come um, and with other partners that we might have for this event and for the future. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, first off, Georgia's considering, I think there are five bills currently going through the process for written by Democrats, one by a Republican, creating a potential process for expungement. So one thing that Aditi can talk a lot about is that we do process and journey maps, um, specifically the process map for what that new law could look like. So that could be one option. Another thing is most states have um, some attempt at juvenile record sealing, and that's a separate process. But you could actually just look at the juvenile process, see, map that process, see how, do all the same questions for both sides on the juvenile side. Um, because like adult record clearance and record sealing, often people aren't getting access to those services. So if you can highlight that issue and problem as well in your state, I think that would be a great use of time. Thank you. Luigi, you may already be in touch, but um, I know CAS is organizing, I think, four great events um, across Georgia, and and she just gave an update on that on call. I was on, I was pretty inspired by it, which includes a lot of um, voter registration work, too. So there's might be other things like that that you want to explore. Um, since we've kind of decided to focus on Amendment 4, do you think that that is a good move or do you think we should focus on the broader expungement path and then, I don't know, make, make an emphasis on the Amendment 4 thing? Or do you think it's better to get more into detail in one specific area? Oh, I, I don't know. I think it would be, I'd have more questions for you and the work that's going on so far. But I think wherever your partners probably have the most momentum would create the most meaningful connection and work for you all. Um, but I'm happy to ask, answer more specific questions or talk to you about the project if that's helpful. And I think, oh sorry, I was gonna add that I think the other thing is a lot of these like things or tools that we're putting forward don't have to be used explicitly just for expungement. A journey map can be used for something like Amendment 4 for someone trying to regain their rights. Um, it'll just maybe be the questions that you might be asking are slightly different or where you're finding these people might be a little bit different um, or like sort of the interactions between you and your, you and your partner have to be maybe a little bit more thought out um, in terms of what is most useful for them um, when they're thinking about what they're trying to do for Amendment 4, if that makes sense. But I imagine things like uh, journey mapping or even the usability scorecard, lots of the questions that are on there um, can be used whether or not you're focusing on expungement specifically. Okay, um, I have a question. Um, I've seen a lot of confusion in articles, you know, in media and among um, petitioners uh, about expungement versus sealing. How can we be most clear about differentiating the two so that, I mean, you know, we have some groups working on sealing and some groups working on expungement. And we really want to make sure that confusion doesn't exist in our network and, and in the messaging we put out. So, yes. And we definitely hear that. We explicitly use the word record clearance, you'll see throughout the entire toolkit, except when we're referencing National Expungement Week, uh, because at a high level, we're looking at all sorts of record clearance policies. Nationally, expungement is used, even if it's not complete destruction of a record, 
expungement in many states also just means sealing. So I would say the best thing you can do is just whatever word is appropriate in your state, define what that means explicitly. Okay. Is it possible to add wording to the material on the national level that says record clearance refers to, you know, sealing and expungement so, yeah. so that, so that, you know, it's clear that those are at times separate uh, processes and separate results. Yes, that's a great suggestion and we can take care of that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We have four minutes left. Uh, how about, what if you don't have contact with the people that are attempting this um, in other capacities? So what was it last Saturday was the restorative, was they, there was a restorative justice clinic in downtown St. Louis today. Um, I didn't know about it because I'm not actually very well in touch with the, the local legislation here, but uh, you know, uh, one of our state senators uh, tweeted about it, and that's how I found out about it. And they were in touch with the, the local pro bono law office called, um, uh, anyway, they, they pulled that off, and I was wondering if we could ask them to do it again. I could show them these materials, but I, I just have to, like, well, make contact with them <laughs> again. How do I avoid stepping on toes and re repeating efforts? Can I repeat back what I heard? Sure. So I heard there was an event today that was around restorative justice, and you're wondering how you can not step on toes, but ask them to repeat that event again in September? Uh, right, it was a restorative justice clinic, but like they tweet actually mentioned that they were doing such things as uh, records, um, sorry, records expungement, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you know if they were teaching restorative justice or just kind of doing an education campaign? Um, the tweet was about restorative, no, I mean, they, no, it had the word, I mean, they mentioned restorative justice, but it was a, about the event and it was, them expunging people's records. Got it. Um, I so think it's a bit confusing from my from looking at it, but yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't go in asking them to repeat the event, but I think definitely go in and tell them, hey, this seems really cool. I'm sorry, I found out late and couldn't participate. We're doing an event. Talk to talk to them about Code for uh, St. Louis. We're doing X event. Sorry, Open St. Louis. Open yes. STL. Yeah, Open STL. Uh, we're doing an event um, on X day around record clearance at large. Um, I would love to, and you can always ask to talk to them or ask them if there's other people they might recommend you reach out to. Uh, I wouldn't start off by asking them to repeat the event, but you also never know because a lot of people who are working record clearance do pretty regular events as is, and potentially they might already be within the uh, National Expungement Week groups. Off the top, that of makes head, me feel. Or if there is a uh, St. Louis, um, I don't think there is, but I think I imagine they probably do events fairly regularly or do have some some clear things that they would love to partner on. Yeah. Okay, that that makes me feel a little bit better about. Hang on, about yeah, asking them to maybe not, or, or at least asking how they pulled it together and pulled it off because I, I have. Yeah, it's kind of irritating. We lost a lot of contact with the partners we had in this area. Yeah, and I think the number one thing you can do when trying to build new partnerships or restart new partnerships is just to like, listen, hear about the things they're working on, share what you're working on, and then see if like they might actually be like, oh, that's great. We would love to partner and do X, Y, Z thing. Um, but coming at it from a place of curiosity and wanting to support and elevate their work where possible and sharing how your excitement about what you're doing, I think is probably the best way to start that relationship. So, and then would is it be in poor taste to remind them of some of the things we've done with them in the past? 
I mean, we at least one of our partners was I just finally remembered. Um, it was um, Legal Services of Eastern Missouri, or also known as the Arch. Well, Arch Defenders is the primary group, well known, and then there are others that are connected to the Marshall Project and everything. So maybe remind them, or would that be a bad idea? I don't think it's a bad idea. I think you might just explicitly want to say who your main contact is. Like I could imagine this either as a direct message on Twitter or an email to them being like, hey, saw this event, congratulations. Maybe one sentence about something interesting to you. Uh, introduce yourself, introduce OpenSTL, and mention that you worked with X person on Y type of thing, and then make your explicit ask around like, hey, I'm, I'm, we're holding this event, blah, blah, blah on X date um, and a, in a brief question around, I would love to hear more about what went well with your event, if you're working on more or have more upcoming dates around expungement. Okay, okay, thanks. That's, yeah, tact is, is key here and I'm <laughs> definitely afraid I might screw it up. All right, thank you. Just keep it brief and light. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, well, we are just coming up or just at time. Um, so if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out um, to anybody directly or to post in the National Day of Civic Hacking channel. Um, we'd be happy, we're always happy um, and want to help you in your planning and in your work. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining the call today. Um, I'd especially like to thank Milani and Aditi and Ben for presenting um, and please um, keep in touch with us and we're excited to see how your events go. If you know anybody that has not registered their event, please, please, please tell them to do so as soon as possible so we can promote um, their event. And if you have any questions about partnering um, with a National Expungement Week clinic in your city, please reach out to us as well. Um, anything else? Anything else you want to lift up, Meredith? No, I think that's great. Um, thank you all, as always, for all the work you do, and please be vocal about how we can support you. Awesome. I had one last thing, sorry. Um, so if we have like a local group that we think would be good for Expungent Week, but isn't actually part of it yet, could we like tell them that they should get involved? Totally. Like yes, ask them if they want to not tell them, but ask them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Julia, uh, myself and um, and Veronica can probably help you with that. We can um, put your partner in touch with the National Expungement Week organizers, so to make some connections there, I think that would be great. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye